Hi everyone, this is Dennis. Welcome to our first video blog. Joining me here is Ken, Director of Content, Matt, Henry, Director of uh, Game Design. And uh, we're here just to talk about uh, the trip and the roundup and, you know, just to give yeah. back. Yeah, yeah so uh, we just got done playing the game. Uh, we spent some quality time with it, as you're going to find out soon. And uh, obviously we came away very impressed, so uh, oh, we'd chat with, with you guys about it for a few minutes. And the first thing we want to address is, you know, I guess there was a lot of comments previously from you saying, you know, you didn't want to show the game uh, until it was really in a finished state. So, you know, why are we, why are we seeing it now? Yeah, well, I think, I think, you know, the whole theory about showing games when they're finished is, is really, um, is, is something very valuable in a, a direction the industry needs to turn in. Unfortunately for 2Human, it's far too late. We've already showed 2Human, you know, at E3, and it, got, it came off with a, a huge negative response. And um, we felt that the game was in a, that what we're showing here, the game's in a pretty good state to start to look at it now, and it's finally representative where kind of a lot of the stuff that you worked on is yes. finally getting in there. A lot of the game design stuff that Henry and that we've all worked towards is finally getting in there. And um, so uh, in the future with our future products, we hope to get that goal, but it's, you know, we have partners that we have to work with, and just like a marriage, if you ask for that big screen TV, everyone's <laughs> got to be on board before you move forward, so. Right, right. Okay, yeah, well, that's understandable. Just, uh, how about the, uh, the progress you guys have made, I guess? Let's talk a little bit about that, if you could. If you want, I don't know if, which one of you guys want to talk about it. But. Well, I think the progress has really hit so many of the areas, but I think the most important thing is what we have now that you guys can see and some of what you've seen here, mm -hmm. is you can actually see kind of the summation of where all of the different areas go. You know, people always ask us about one thing or the other thing, and a true Silicon Knights game, and really, you know, to human, of course, it's about a sum of all those things, the music, the content, the story, showing the RPG elements, the gameplay, and the action, and finally being able to taste all of those things, see how they come together. That's what truly, really defines to human and a Silicon Knights game, and it's finally viewable. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I noticed at E3 that was, you know, it was a very incomplete package, and oh, yeah. we saw just a really, you know, brief snippet of what's there, and now we've got all the content in. Um, and you know, for I know a lot of, S I'm a huge Silicon Knights fan, everyone knows that. And uh, as an SK fan, I look forward to your storylines. And uh, now that we've finally seen some of that in Two Human, uh, you know, there's a lot more to the game, I think, than, than a lot of people realize. It, it takes a lot of time to actually bring together actually a full presentation. I mean, you can mm -hmm. present a bit of story here and there, but unless you have a good theme from beginning to end and a way of presenting it properly, you're never going to get anybody to be really fully convinced that the story is there. Right. So we took our time to do that. And, and, and the interesting thing about that, and a lot of people that they don't understand, and that's one of the things that Ken, uh, Ken's you know, worked diligently at incorporating the content in such a way that it's, you can't remove it. So some of the stuff that you're going to see when we go from gameplay into story back into gameplay, the game is just not the same without that anymore. And, and uh, when, when the content department's working with the design department and we're really creating this kind of fusion, um, what we showed at E3 just had none of that and it, it just was just like straight up, here's some combat examples. And we really probably just should have kept it in a small combat room and just left it at that rather than what we showed. But now with the story starting to come out, people can see the detail, the number of gods, the yeah, pantheon, We, the we want the story to come out as you play the game, not play the game, get a bit of story, play the game and get a bit of story. Right. So we want to build the story throughout everything, throughout the UI game design itself, how the, the game is presented to the player so that he absorbs the content as he's actually playing and enjoying the game experience. Yeah, and I, and I think that's an important comment because you know the story in a Silicon Knights game is not there to bookend. It's, yeah. it's interweaven and it's intertwined throughout the whole gameplay. And just as much as the gameplay progresses as you play more and more, the story needs to progress more and more, and those go hand in hand. And if you know you just jump somebody into come a little snippet of a scenario of a Silicon Knights game, you really don't understand what it's all about, and it's tough to to get a foothold on. Yeah, yeah. the win-win is when everything is working in a, like a symbiotic yeah. relationship. Yeah. Everything, all well, the our five different it, parts of uh, engagement phrase. Exactly, and and you know it was pr pretty interesting when we showed it internally for the first time. Mm -hmm. Just it was such a good watermark for the company. Never mind externally, like where the whole company just went. Oh, this is what we want. Yeah. And we finally got to the point where it was at something where everyone started feeling satisfied, and then we had hoped that you would have the same reaction that we had internally when we, uh, when, when we brought you guys well, Yeah, it was very seamless. That's what I'm noticing in this latest build is that you know, you're running through an area, you're going into combat, and at the same time while you're doing that very interactively, you know, a scene is displaying right there in front of you. It cuts to that and you come back into combat. And you know, it's not really intrusive. Um, which is, yeah. you know, and it's also not a cut. You're not feeling like, oh, they just let a cutscene. 
Yeah. Um, so that's that's great. That's really good. Well, I'm, in, I'm I'm interested personally in the reaction when people find out that there's interactivity in some of these things. Um, and I know when I first played Half Life, that first scene where you're going down the tram, to me that was an epiphany of where the industry needed to go. And I thought Belt did that really really well. And that's what we're trying to push as much as we can into human this convergence of interactivity and content. Yeah. And I think I think. I think, if anything, that's if people to say what does what does two human really represent? It's this convergence that we've been working yeah, towards for the, so long. Our, I guess our our main goal is basically have you experience events as they happen around you, and the camera as basically following you in terms of the action, but basically is bringing out story elements as it happens around you. That is, I think, our, like from where I'm sitting, the, our ultimate goal as game designers and storytellers. And it's interesting because I've been trained my whole life. Uh, you know, you go to a cutscene and you don't control that. So it, it was jarring almost for me to, you, 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 Matt, you know, I'd see a scene where the camera's focusing through a machine's eyes on, you know, on Balder. Yeah. And I thought, no, I can't control that. And he said, Matt, you can control that. And, and I'm like, whoa, it's almost, you know, snapped me out of my place. Yeah. So it's pretty interesting. I think a lot of people are... It, 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 it should be new territory to explore, and we've got a long way to go. It's wide open territory, and we're not claiming, you know, to be the best at that or anything. But if just we can, if that's going to be a new open territory that the industry can start to explore, it's just better games for everybody. Yeah. You know. Well, guys, I know it's a video blog post, so I don't want to take up too much time, but I do want to touch on the whole uh, misconception: that this is just a straight up action game, mm. uh, and that's something we've seen. I think you know is not really true with this latest demo. I'm hoping you guys could speak to that. Yeah, um, well, I don't know who wants. Do you want to jump in first, Henry? Well, I mean, I, I think you know we did do a bit of disservice with only showing that element of the game so far. I mean, it's it's pretty logical that people are going to come to that conclusion from what we've tangibly provided them. Um, but but really, it is just one facet of the game. You know, we want the people that do want an action game. They want the fast action. You know, they want to feel that pop of you know hitting the enemies and smacking smacking them around to get that satisfaction. But there's so many other elements there that people need to be able to taste as well and show that it comes together. We want the guys who are trying to deck out their character and, and get them perfect mm -hmm. and invest the time into the character. That's the biggest and most important thing is you should le be leveling and progressing in this game because you want to, not because you have to. You should be leveling to see more story, more mm -hmm. progression, more areas, more enemies, more battles, new things that you can do for your character, new items. It should all come together in one big, big package. Even mentioning the idea of like the role-playing game elements, you know, people jump off the deep end. Is it going to be like Baldur's Gate, or you know, how much uh, of a party do you have? We're really basically taking the, the character development parts of that and then tying it with an action game and then using both of them to basically push our story through through the roof. Hopefully, right. um, it's it's difficult to sum a game up like that, like to human, yeah. in a very like yeah. one concise sentence. And one one of the problems one of the problems I think that we have when we describe any of our games, if you look at Legacy of Kane when we first did it, and, and then you move on to something, say, like Eternal Darkness. Every project, we run into the same things, where they are very different games from what's out there. When we created Legacy of Kane, it was a game where you had an anti-hero that was kind of had some Zelda role-playing elements or, or action-adventure elements, but it was completely alien from a lot of things that people had seen. So we try to describe it. We can only use things that kind of describe it. I remember when Eternal Darkness came out, everyone thought that it was a Resident Evil clone. Yeah. And it was, we were just like, it's nothing like Resident Evil. We had people in the industry after six months saying, well, I didn't play that Resident Evil clone. And then finally the word's gotten around, it's got nothing like Resident Evil. And for us, when you talk about some of the elements we're mixing, we don't know how to describe them because there's nothing that we feel is really similar. And we can talk mm -hmm. about fusions from these other things. So we yeah. say like Diablo and Devil May Cry, but it's only very specific elements that Which people may relate to. Which is dangerous in itself because right. then it sets up another stereotype of like, oh, you're trying to be like this, you're trying to be like that. Or that we're trying to be better than right. Devil May Cry. Right, and that's the problem is, you know, some of the things that make those games masterpieces is because they focus on exactly what defines their game. And we have to do the same thing and people have to understand that. And I think a lot of the misconception is when you say, you know, our game is story heavy, it's content heavy, it's action heavy, it's RPG heavy, people see those as big separate threads. And mm, that's yeah. not how Silicon Knights does things. All of those things are one big thread. Yeah. And, you know, they, mm -hmm. they really go hand in hand and they're just as important to each other. Just because we say you've got an RPG element, that doesn't mean you're just getting, you know, a plus stat. You are getting something that affects the gameplay and the enemies yeah. and the story in some ways. And story, and the art together. design, everything. And, yep. and it's that fusion of, you know, gameplay, art, audio, technology, and which one did I miss? <laughs> Music. <laughs> Music, no, I said. Yeah. Sound. Sound, no, no. Audio, technology, gameplay, art, and... 
No, I missed another one. Content. 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 There, I'm missing one. <laughs> All at the table. I always miss one. I was and it, and, and um, you know, at the end of the day, uh, oh, there I said it. Uh, we really want to fuse all those things together, and that's our games. Our games will always be about that. Yeah, and I, I think that's important because there's so many games out there now is that, you know, we really have to convince people we're worthy of your time. And yeah. not only from a standpoint of we need to give the player a bunch of things that they can get interested in and want to see and want to do, but once they're there, we've got to keep giving them that, and we've got to hook yeah. them and keep yeah, them yeah. going. That and it's only going to help. It's only going to happen with this kind of depth. The gaming industry's gotten to the point that basically. A potential customer wants to basically have everything, yet not everybody wants everything in mm -hmm. one particular product. There are still purist gamers out there who want a specific type of gamer. I know as a first person shooter fan, I want my first person shooters to be you know, pure experiences. I don't want a mix of stealth and shooting. I want it all in one way. Um, and I think uh, for us as developers, it's hard to basically as, as business people, you can't actually just like focus it down to one thing. So we want to rope in as many people as possible. As developers, uh, I think even at the publisher level, they want to basically get as big a demographic as possible. And that means taking in all these different elements, which sometimes in the past haven't really worked together very well, and then actually making a very playable, addictive product out of that to actually get all these people going in and buying it and still having an enjoyable experience. I, I think that's a super important point, especially since uh, I get a lot of comments of how does the melee blend in with the ranged combat. And I think you know one of the things that I am you know really happy with, and, and hopefully everybody will see it in the video and, and and things like that, is how seamless the melee goes into the range. And it's not just about giving the player that repertoire; it's about giving them specific uses and knowing when and when they want to use mm -hmm. that stuff. They see the missiles being shot at them; they know I want to shoot these things back down. They see a bunch of people swarm around them; they know I want to dispatch these guys and knock them back and get them out of here with the melee. And you know you really want to give the players that feeling of hey, there's a lot of stuff you can be interested in jump in and experience what our game is about and then when they've experienced that they can see what the core of two human is and that core may be a very different thing than what they expected but it's something they can take and latch onto and love and play yeah absolutely yeah agree very cool guys well um i don't want to take up any more time so let's just close out if we could just your final comments for maybe uh, people watching uh, for me, uh, and I think I speak on behalf of a lot of the company, um, that this was a personal catharsis for us. You know, we came out of E3 um, with, uh, you know, we left a pretty bad taste in a lot of people's mouths, inclu including ourselves. And for us to hear some positive comments fr from you guys has been uh, a really big thing for us internally. And uh, we hope, you know, when people see the stuff that you guys have seen, they will feel the same way. But you know, the always in the end, when you make a video game, you, you, if you make something you like yourself, you're at least pleasing one person. It's glad to know that we've pleased more than one so far. Yeah. Well, I, I want to add that real quick. You know, I think for us, the thing is, two humans are passion and, it, and it's our lives. And the, the best thing that we can ever get out of that is seeing people's reaction of enjoying the game. And just being able to, you know, finally see some of that and taste some of that, it, it really, really helps us a lot. And it gives us a lot of good feedback and, and kind of knowing where we're going with things and stuff. Yeah, I really don't have a whole lot to add to that, except that I hope that people who actually do play Kitty to Human will uh, think about the concepts that are in there, think about our statement, and hopefully in enjoy playing it over and over again. In order to see everything that's there, there should be a lot of little treasures and things for people to find. So. Great. Agreed. Well, yeah, this is just a little, I guess, preview of things to come. We're going to have much bigger footage here in the next well, little bit. Awesome. So uh, everyone else can tune in for that. Cool. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. Thank you.